And this month's issue of BRM, I was asked to produce a construction site diorama. It's actually a really interesting idea for a topic. Not only because we don't see them very often in models, but also because there are a variety of different approaches that we can take, from high-rise buildings, to railway construction projects, and also the commercial buildings that I've got in the front here. It's also quite good because there are a number of kits that can help you to get started, including these from the Gage Master Ford Hampton range. So we've got the site office here, and we've also got the construction site accessories kit, which comprises of the scaffolding here, the cement mixer, and all these different components that you can see around the diorama. That said, there's plenty of scope for scratch building if you want a challenge. The steel frame building and the hoarding are both good examples of that. The hoarding was a little bit fiddly to begin with, but it was definitely doable with a little bit of care and attention. The steel frame building on the other hand did present some problems, but not actually with the structure itself, but the foundation it sits on. This was originally a piece of 40 foul plastic card, which was later cut up to form walls inside the building. The problem was down to one simple oversight, not notching the brickwork over the concrete pads that the columns sat on. This meant that when it came to gluing the structure down, I was left with a 1mm gap underneath all the walls, which all had to be filled manually using a mix of plaster and concrete coloured emulsion. And as uh, well you can probably imagine, that was a very tedious way to spend an hour. The structure itself was predominantly made from plastrucked sections, as you saw in the article. There were also extra flanges underneath, formed from plasticard scraps. Reusing materials and even designing structures based on the materials you have to hand is a really good way not only to save money, but also to save on wastage. As I mentioned in the article, the bridge and embankment at the rear of the diorama weren't exactly part of the brief. However, I included them to show how you could fit in such a scene onto an existing model railway. It also allowed me to share a technique of making concrete using dust, air drying clay that you could use elsewhere on any other project. The bridge was based on two existing concrete prototype structures. One in Markswood near Southampton, which is where the wing walls and abutments came from, and the other was in Leeds, which the deck itself was based on. Merging two prototypes like this won't always work, but for modern structures you tend to have a little bit more leeway, as the designs tend to be either a little bit more generic, or perhaps simpler in form. That said, a lot of older buildings seem to have a lot of later additions in life, some less sympathetic than others. Either way, the key with modelling things like this is to really pay attention to the details. Note how I've tried to represent the recessed lower steel beam by indenting the lower section of clay with a dentist tool. It's a subtle detail that stops the whole bridge looking too flat and boring. The wing walls also had a vertical texture added by scraping the dry clay with a fine tooth tractor from top to bottom. Subtle textures like this are a really good way to bring your model to the next level, but perhaps the best improvement you can make is to weather them, preferably using photos of the real thing. Above all else, a project like this will require a little bit of experimentation. The ground texture here is a good example of that. I knew that sand and ballast would be far too coarse to represent the dusty nature of construction sites, but I still wanted some texture. I therefore experimented with a runny mix of plaster over the top to smooth things out a little bit more. After some sanding and a few more hours of experimentation with a few washes of paint, I finally achieved a subtle ground texture with a slight blend of colours. So, with plenty of kits and accessories out there, why not give something like this a go yourself? I'd absolutely love to see what you come up with. <laughs>